Hello, welcome to another section on uncovering the missing secrets of magnetism. You can see here we have a CRT tube and a 2 inch by 1 inch thick N45 Gauss neodymium iron boron. You can see the field pattern of reciprocation on the CRT tube. Of course, this only gives you a cross section better than yet still not much better than iron filings would. What we're seeing here is our centrifugal, intracentrifugal, our divergent, leaving, returning around and entering in centripetally here. This is our centripetal field distortion on the CRT tube. This is the convergent entering in to the center of this side and likewise here at the bottom the convergent centripetal entering into the opposite side as they're reciprocating. Along here what you're seeing is a cross section. Just imagine a donut cut vertically. This is the dielectric inertial plane which occurs exactly along the edge of each and every magnet. This is the, as an analogy, the uh, flywheel and electrical engineering it's called electrical inertia this is that field line displayed on the CRT tube of the dielectric flywheel what is the dielectric inertial plane which is inertial it is radial it is counterspatial it is centripetal okay if you can see here this section right here is our divergent or centrifugal same thing over here, leaving this side of the magnet and returning centripetally, convergently here. And this is our dielectric inertial plane. Let's take a look at it using a different background. You can see things a little easier. Okay, can you see better? Like I said, just imagine a donut being cut exactly in half vertically. And just imagine a torus. Like I said, you're only getting a two-dimensional representation here. Now the black spot in the center is... The reason that it's teardrop shaped, if you can see behind here, the reason that it is teardrop shaped is because dielectricity is repelled from magnetism. And as we know, the maximum velocity of any magnet is the centrifugal field leaving at the edge of either side of any magnet which is distorting the dielectric field of the CRT tube but the reason you're asking well why is it not perfectly circular why is it egg shaped like this well let's first examine this this occurs at a ratio of 1 to 5 this being 1 over here is a kind of robin's egg shaped if you can see behind the magnet the reason for that is is the magnetism on either side of the centrifugal or the divergent point is distorting, is pushing away the dielectricity from the ray gun of the uh, cathode ray tube. But the reason why it is closer here to the magnet is because the dielectric inertial plane along right here of the magnet, it is attracted to that. So it is both attracted and yet extremely repelled by the centrifugal magnetism conjugating, or sort of the reciprocating out of either side of the magnet. That is why it is egg shaped like this. Perfectly logical and it also occurs at a golden section angle of 5 to 1. Like I said you can see it there. It is robin egg shaped. That's why it is not perfectly circular. Remember that the dielectricity attracts dielectricity. That's why this egg shaped void is pointed at the dielectric inertial plane here on the other side of the magnet. And as we zoom out you can understand it. I'll create more diagrams, more proofs. I said I have an invention that I recently came up with that shows a 3D uh, hydrodynamic uh, vortex reciprocation. I'm trying to get it patented. This would be the centrifugal, the divergent field leaving from the bottom side of this magnet. The same thing on top here. This whole area right here is the divergent or the centrifugal, meaning leaving out. What's the difference between centrifugal and centripetal? Some people basically 
Cannot remember that from school, or they probably weren't taught that, so what's the difference between a centrifugal vortex and a centripetal vortex? Well, it's really simple. An easy way to put it in your head. A, a centrifugal vortex would be like cracking a whip. As we all know, you don't have to remove your wrist that much to make the end of the whip crack or break the sound barrier. So what is a centripetal vortex like? The returning centripetal vortex, it is getting faster and faster and faster as it's approaching the dead center of the magnet here. A centripetal vortex is like pulling the drain plug on your bathtub. It's moving very slowly up here. If this were your drain and this were the plug here, Moving very slowly here and getting faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. Just the opposite of a centrifugal vortex, where it is moving slowest from the dead center of the magnet at the point just above the midpoint of the dielectric inertial plane, and likewise on the other side of the dielectric inertial plane, on the quote unquote other side of the pole. Moving slowest and moving faster and faster and faster until it reaches the edge of the magnet. That is max velocity or max throw. It is a double hyperbola. As is mathematically proven, not my speculation, opinion, conjecture, belief, the maximum throw of inversion of a sphere in the interatomic magnetodielectricity of any atom is a double hyperbola. Well, what do we see here? Well, we see a double hyperbola. You can Google um, inversion of a sphere. What you will see is this dumbbell shape. Right here, of course, coming, coming collectively, convergently right here, and leaving out again. Of course, what a dumbbell shape doesn't show you is that the centrifugal is leaving here, coming around, reciprocating, returning centripetally, or convergently here, likewise from both sides. This is the conjugate nature in a binding system. Obviously the magnetism cannot leave the dielectricity, and the dielectricity cannot leave the magnetism inside the interatomic geometry of the neodymium iron boron, its crystalline structure, or if this were not a neodymium iron boron magnet, rather just a standard old type ferrous magnet, a magnet is still a magnet. Neodymiums are much more powerful due to their lattice structure and how they're able to undergo much greater electrical saturation because of the crystalline ladder structure of the neodymium iron boron composite material making up the ceramic magnets but ultimately they're all the same all magnets are electrified all magnets are dielectric objects which when spun up create this special geometry of magnetism you can see it here like i said or a centripetal Remember the difference between a centripetal and a centrifugal? Centripetal is like pulling the drain plug. It's slowest as it's slowest furthest away and it's approaching. It's getting faster and faster and faster. Same thing with any centripetal vortex. The same thing with a tornado. A tornado at the very top of the clouds is going very slow and it's creating all the havoc where it's touching the ground. That is the centripetal vortex of the returning or the convergent vortex as it is returning from the, con the divergent or centrifugal vortex from the other side and returning centripetally to the opposite or conjugate side. And in opposite to that, the centrifugal or divergent vortex, just like cracking a whip, you're not moving your wrist very much to create, uh, as an analogy, breaking the sound barrier at the edge of the whip. The centrifugal vortex is moving very slowly, well, relatively speaking. It's gaining speed inside the uh, magnetic mass and it's leaving. As is proof from any field viewing material and any uh, magnetometer, if you have a magnetometer and you can place it on the top of a huge magnet like this, you'll notice that the uh, Gauss rating on the magnetometer is very low in this intermediate section here very high right in the center. This isn't my idea or belief, this is an absolute fact. If you have a magnetometer, and they're quite expensive by the way, you'll have a really high Gauss rating right here from a magnetometer. You'll have an intermediate or low reading right here in the midsection. But the maximum velocity occurs right around the edge. That is the centrifugal exiting divergent vortex on either side of, of every magnet doesn't matter if it's neodymium iron boron, if it's natural magnets like a lodestone, or it's an old time ferrous magnet. It's all the same. The only difference is the power rating. So, 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Send me any questions and download the free book, Uncovering the uh, Missing Secrets of Magnetism. Watch the other videos. And uh, the third edition will be coming out in a month. Email me with any questions that you have about magnetism. We'll be making a lot more videos. If you have any suggestions on something that you think about magnetism that's unclear, send it to me. I'll be happy to make a uh, instant video for you and post it online. So I hope you enjoyed this and I didn't bore you to tears. And I hope you educated you and give you a more clear, lucid understanding. Layer after layer, you will have a clear, lucid simplex understanding of what magnetism is, what the conjugate system of magnetodielectricity is within a binding system, and why a magnet acts the way it acts, and what a magnet really is, not a magnet, but a dielectric electrified object with a ratio of 3.236 parts dielectricity to one part magnetism. That's, of course, ultimately in an ideal system. But anyway, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another video. There are more to come with some really fascinating stuff that will amaze and shock you. At least I hope it will. That is, if you have a natural curiosity for understanding some of the simplex, most fundamental principles of nature. If not, then you may not be interested. So, thanks for watching. See you later.